This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Through it all, you see it now, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. Through it all. And I don't know the all that some of you are going through right now, but I have to believe that it is to get you to this place I've learned to depend and trust Him. Mentality 2023, Creflo Dollar Ministries' annual Revival of Manhood is back, and it's time to release the weight of manhood. We'll cover issues that weigh on men from all walks of life. The trap of emotions, self-preservation, the false balance of success, and more. Text MENTALITY to 51555. Scan the QR code on your screen or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. Register now. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We are changed. You know what? What happens when you done did everything you know to do? Watch this, and it doesn't work. Have you ever been there before? I've done everything I know to do, and it's not working. Now watch this. Here's what we say. I don't, I don't know why we don't get this. And finally, I say, God, I don't know what else to do, so I guess I might as well trust you. <laughs> and then something awesome happens. Anybody ever did that before? Over and over again, right? I done looked for a job, I done called, I done went on the internet, I done called all the people who promised me they didn't get me a job, I done did everything I knew to do. Well, Lord, I might as well trust you. And God was like, good, I've been trying to get you out of my way for the longest. I had your job four months ago when you first started. So why didn't he just give it to you right then? I'm trying to show you the necessity of trusting me. Not to trust me optionally, not an option. No, no, no. To trust me as a necessity, as a life. Waking up trusting me. You know, stuff can happen. These days and times, somebody say, well, I don't want to get any risk. Risk everywhere. This day and time, you can go to the grocery store and get shot. This day and time, you can be driving. And, 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 and something happened. Uh, you, can, you can be on the way home, didn't know a storm was coming, a tornado, turn your car. This day and time, I got to trust God. I mean, what you going to do, as Steph and I went through, what you going to do when you're over the Pacific Ocean and an engine go out and it was supposed to be brand new and it went out, you over the Pacific Ocean, what, what, what you going to do, call the Justice League? Superman, Superman, ain't nobody coming. Ain't nobody gonna show up. Hey, glory to God. The only person you can call is Jesus. And we did. We did. I was la ba sa la la ba la ba la, and I was looking for the escape hatches. La la ba la sa la ba. I didn't know whether he was gonna rescue me in the air or rescue me on water. But either way, I'm gonna give him a chance to rescue me. <laughs> That's the only one I could depend on. Not nobody, nowhere gonna be able to help me out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, but Jesus. Now, take that incident and how you depended on me then 
and depend on me for everything in your life. You, you, follow, what, you follow what I'm saying? So the believer is exercised by chastening only as he yields to the hand of God. Only as he yields to the hand of God. Now, okay, here it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12 through 15. Turn there. Some are not exercised by chastening. Some people just won't do it. They pass through the trials that God allows, and then they come out without yielding to God's hands. We, we all used to probably do that, just pass on through the trials and then just kind of pick up from where we left off. So what happens? These the Lord shall deal with in his own way after this life has been passed, the unmistakable teaching that we have all but it ignored in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and 12, I bring to you now. Verse 12, now if any man build upon this foundation, now the foundation is Jesus, our dependence upon him, he's our foundation. Any man builds upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, hay or wood, hay and stubble, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, not hell's fire, consuming fire. It shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work to see what source it came from, what sort it is. So all of our works, while we were alive, all of it's going to be tried and tested by the fire in heaven, the consuming fire of God. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, so all the stuff you did, if it abides, he shall receive a reward. So if your works... If your works abide the fire, you're going to receive a reward. If any man works shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. So we're not talking about going to hell. You, 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 you're in heaven, but your works are being tested. Let me simplify. Your works are being tested to see were those works born out of dependence upon God, or were those works born out of dependence upon self? What you built, was it built by depending on God, or was it built by depending on self? Wow. Wow. If any man's work shall be burned, it shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Now, let's go through this real quick. So that the issue is here is, the issue here is not eternal life or, or everlasting uh, dam damnation. That's not the issue here. This is not the issue of eternal life. Everybody in heaven here. Huh. The issue here is that some will receive gain, some will suffer loss, both in heaven. Two groups here, three words each. Two groups of three words each describe the different materials with which a believer builds. In the first group, you have uh, wood, hay, and stubble. The first group are the things which, no, the first group are the things that stand the test, gold, silver, and precious stones. They stand the test. But then the other group, things that are consumed, wood, 
hay, and everybody used stubble to burn. <laughs> So let's look at the wood, hay, and stubble. The wood, hay, and stubble is used figuratively, and it speaks of humanity and the things of the flesh. Wood is a more valuable building material than hay because it can be shaped, it can be beautified, beautiful wood cabinets and floors. It has a certain degree of durability and stability, but hay lacks all of these qualities, and stubble is always spoken of as only fit for burning. All of these represent, wood, hay, and stubble represents human accomplishments. Things done in self-will, things done by human power for self-gratification, for acceptance by men, things done so that people will accept you. To men, some of these things seem attractive and enduring. Others have little or no value and are transitory, but to God all are the same. They are without value, only to be consumed by fire because they are human accomplished. They are based in self-effort. However, gold, silver, precious stones, they stand the test of fire and they endure. So gold in the Bible symbolizes deity, the things of God. Gold symbolizes the things of God. Silver symbolizes redemption through Jesus Christ, delivered through Jesus. And precious stones refer to valuable building stones that will endure. The structure is great and it has lasting value. Now we know in 1 Peter chapter 2 and 5, the believers are called living stones built in a spiritual house. And Jesus is the what? Chief cornerstone. So this points to the thought that only those works which are of God according to His will and by His power, those which in some way contribute to the building of the church of Christ will survive God's test by fire. So think about what I'm saying here. Whatever you did here, whatever you're, you know, pretty pleased with. Was it built by your effort or was it built by depending on him? It's the most sobering thought that the consuming fire of God shall burn out everything that does not contribute to God's purpose for this age. And for many believers, this may be all their earthly life being burnt out. Think about if you spent all your Christian life, you got saved, you made Jesus the Lord of your life, and you are in heaven. You made it to heaven. And now you got all these works that you know you did. And on the inside, you're feeling pretty big about yourself. Oh, yes, I was a member of this department, that department. Oh, yeah, say, mine. I was a preacher. I. I preached to 39 nations. And then the fire tested. And everything burned except for one day, the day you depended on God to save you. I said, oh, heck no. <laughs> What? I don't know about you, but I'm like, oh, no, all this? All these folks, all these headaches, all this sweat, all this traveling, all that, and it's going to burn up? Because it... <laughs> I'm being honest with you. I'm, I'm tripping out. It's going to burn up because I didn't depend on you. I'm like, not here. Oh, no. I start going through the list of everything I'm involved in and, and, and reevaluating. Now, is this a me or is this a God? Because if it's for me, it ain't going to last in heaven. But if it's for God, it'll stand the test. I want to build my works out of gold and silver and precious stone so when the fire is released, I'll have gain. 
and not loss. But those whose building abides shall receive a reward. It is, however, of great importance to recognize that the reward is not given because of the amount of building that has been done, but because of the kind of materials that were used when you did it. These materials must be in accordance with God's plan for the building. A great amount of building with wood and hay and stubble will produce a large fire. A small amount of building with gold, silver, and precious stones will endure and be rewarded. It's so amazing. The large num number of people that are extremely active believers to find that they shall suffer a great loss instead of receiving a great reward. It is popularly thought that much and faithful service for Christ will earn for a believer a better position in heaven. In other words, a personal gain will accrue to those who do much for God. So this emphasis is entirely out of harmony with God's plan of grace because it makes self-gain the object of the endeavor that you do. And when this happens, the motive is no longer, I did it because I love God. The motive is no longer that it was done out of a labor of love. The motive was, I did this so I can have a better position in heaven, so I did it. Rewards cannot be payment of a debt owed by God to one who has done much for him, for that would violate the basic principles of grace. Because God gives everything freely out of his own loving heart. Nothing in the eternal state will have been earned by the efforts of those who by grace and grace alone have been granted access to that thing. So rewards will be the gift of God's grace just as truly as the gift of eternal life. So when you get to heaven and get the reward, you still didn't earn it. Whatever gifts you got, Revelation says, we're going to take our crowns and cast them at his feet. Because whatever rewards you get, you have to back up and ask yourself, my whole life was dependent on him, so how can I receive a reward? So in heaven, you'll take all those crowns and you'll say, Lord, I know better. Anything I was able to do, because I depended on you. There you go. There you go, Lord. There you go. I hope you had it, man. I hope it ain't just, here you go. <laughs> Let me close this. He who builds with gold and silver and precious stones uses the things that are of God. He builds in full dependence of God, both his power and his will. So the love of Christ, not the expectation of rewards, constrains you to build. He's not concerned, not with personal glory, but that God is going to be given glory. Building with full dependence upon God. I want you walking out of here today with this attitude, I can't do nothing. It, isn't that the same attitude? Here's Jesus with this exact illustration. I do nothing 
except I do it through the Father. And how are you and I thinking that we can do anything in self-dependence? You accepted Jesus as Lord of your life, you're good, man. You're going to heaven. But that's, that's, all of a sudden, that's not, that's not what I'm after right now. I mean, heaven, yeah. But I don't want to get to heaven and found out I lived all my life in self-dependence and I had him to come into my life? To do what? Sit there and watch me think I can live this life without him? So where are we today? Systems are failing. Governments are going to begin to topple and fall. Wars and rumors of wars all over the place. Bible prophecy hooking up with Russia and China coming together. The Middle East is now breaking out with chaos and chaos and chaos. And you can't hardly turn the news on without just, just freaking out. So much bad stuff. Children killing children. It's just, it just keeps going. More and more and more. The last days, I ask God, why is all this stuff happening in the last days? And I like to think that's, that this is what he said to me, is that it's my last push to try to get people to depend on me. God, I depend on you. I depend on you. We've had to depend on God for a long time, man. I, I had a couple of meetings I had. The FBI had to come to me because there were death threats on, on me and Taffy's life. And I, what am I going to do? I'm canceling. No, I, I, I trust you. I trust you, God. Live this life. Live your final days in total dependence on him. You don't know when the day or the hour is going to come. But whenever it comes, bless God, you want to be able to get out of here saying, I depended on God all my life throughout time and I will depend on him throughout all my eternity. Trust in the Lord. Through it all, through it all, we listen at this morning. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all. Through it all. You see it now. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word through it all. And I don't know the all that some of you are going through right now, but I have to believe that it is to get you to this place. I've learned to depend and trust him. Well, I don't know if you got anything out of that, but I sure got happy. <laughs> Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed, please, if you can hold your walk, and I would appreciate it. Father, we, uh, oh, wow, uh, we ask you help us, Lord, to uh, look over our lives, examine ourselves, and show us the, the areas of our life where we're in self-dependence. Show us that impurity. Let us hear you as you speak to us and let us yield to you as you exercise us through chastening. We love you so much. And if we've gotten so conditioned to just trusting ourselves and trusting systems and trusting man, if we've gotten ourselves to the point where we're doing things because we want validation from man, we're, we're doing things because we want to we please man, 
and you made it very clear that if all we do is please man, then we're not going to be pleasing to you. Help us. We need you. We need you to deliver us from the impurities of self-dependence. Do you ever wonder if God is punishing you? In his two-message series, The Discipline of Grace, Creflo Dollar uncovers the truth about how God actually corrects and guides his children. Self-dependence is impure. God's chastening is to correct and to purify. If a thought comes up, oh my goodness, because of God's punishment, I'm going to end up in hell. Uh, no, no, no. Your destiny has already been set. You've already passed from death to life. You are being dealt with by a father who loves you. This is chastening of the Lord. It's the father dealing with you in love. But he is going to be dealing with you. Both messages can be yours today for a love gift of just 15 U.S. dollars or more for CDs or 25 U.S. dollars or more for DVDs. Visit CreflodollarMinistries.org and click eStore, scan the QR code, or call the number on your screen to get yours now. No matter where you are on your personal journey, the Word of God can reach you. At work or simply needing to hear from the Lord, tune into World Changers every Sunday at 10 a.m or restream at 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Text Watch Now to 51555 or visit worldchangers.org for more information about services and stream times. We're in this together. No matter where we are, we are World Changers. See you online. Do you have a burning desire to see lives changed by the gospel of grace? If so, prayerfully consider supporting Creflo Dollar Ministries financially. You may not be called to preach in a pulpit or perform missions work in another country, but you assist those who are called to do these things each time you give financial gifts to this ministry. God bless you, and I'll see you next time right here on Changing Your World. To support our kingdom mission of winning souls for Jesus, you may call us or give online at creflodollarministries.org. Thank you for giving and enabling us to share this gospel of grace all over the world. Creflo and Taffy Dollar love connecting with you. And here at World Changers, we understand the importance of using technology to do just that. We're constantly working to bring the gospel of Christ to thousands of viewers and followers around the world. And we want you to get involved. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We want to make the word of grace available throughout every voice of social media. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.